Hello there everyone, I'm Mr. MoClover and thank you for joining me here in Kaiser Redux in which we're exploring and going to play as New England and try to get a certain lover here to lead our nation. But, we've already begun and I already selected Mecca's Darkest Hour. And to go down a certain route to get Lovecraft, you have to place Canada, take over New England first, as well as ensure loyalty in the nation just to make sure you can get them. But the provisional government of New England. Thanks to our allies in Canada, we set up a provisional government in Boston as we prepare to liberate the rest of our country. Unfortunately, not many people both in and outside of the state of New England believe that we are the true and legitimate America. We must rectify this problem. The new governor general. Canada has ordered the appointment of a governor general to oversee New England. Many within New England have hoped that New England would become a full republic once independence was granted. Although these hopes appear to have been dashed for now, we still embrace democracy and are marginally independent from Canada. However, this is a worrying sign for things to come. Perhaps Canada can impose it as its complete will on us. The position of governor general has been handed to Prince Albert, second in line for the throne and brother of the current King Edward VIII. He will guide New England, yet have no power, just like in Australia or India. However, most elite members of society want to do away with us and instead install Albert as King of New England. We are loyal to the crown. For now. Oh, we change our flag. Dominion of New England? That is disgusting as an American. But we do have limited recognition and America's darkest hour. Let's go and read this. So, with the rest of the U.S. consumed by war, New England has managed to become a safe harbor and a storm of chaos. We must reassure those in our borders that the provisional government is their only hope for freedom and safety. Ooh. Oh, there goes Austria-Hungary. And we must do God Save the King eventually, but uh, Cressus on the Denu, very nice, very nice. We don't care about all that stuff. Albert. So God Save the King in New England. Uh, so basically, if you would like to read about the Kaiser Path to get uh, Lovecraft, so when we're playing as Canada, release New England and take the Ensure Loyalty Path, which I did. And once the citizens riot, have them overthrow the government. Overthrow. So God Save the King, the New King. Weeks ago, Prince Albert of Windsor was thrown in as Governor General by a Canadian-led court. A majority of noble and autocratic board of advisors run New England from their shadows, while Albert feels free to disregard the will of the Hartford Convention. Today, though, a stunning turn of events was witnessed. The Governor General, Albert of Windsor, was officially crowned as King of New England. Nobles and Canadians rejoice as the citizens scorn. King Albert of Windsor has finally regarded the Republic dead, as he essentially becomes an absolute monarch. God save the King? Hmm... Oh, this is disgusting. America's Darkest Hour. Uh, oh, God save the king. Ah, uh, limit, re limit recognition. Uh, increase the legitimacy. We could cancel that. Um, God save the king. I'm not sure we need to really save. Keep doing this one. I'm not really sure. Spanish Civil War is raging on, which is cool. The Boston Massacre. As such a draw a stir in New England, the most radical of the Anglophiles have been drawn to the side of the loyal coalition headed by H.P. Lovecraft. And he and a small group of writers have taken to the city of Providence to plot, however. Anything coming out of this is unlikely due to Lovecraft's seclusion. The Irish and New English have also begun to take arms, as they believe that the radical Anglophiles will soon drive them out. These tensions that have been simmering below the surface finally erupted today, when protests erupted in Boston today over the coronation of an autocratic king. Most New Englanders have declared Canada and the Windsor illegitimate people have, oh, Windsor's illegitimate. People have been in an uproar, and violence has been widespread. The largest of these protests have been in Boston, the nation's capital. As the Irish and English and England takes up arms against each other, Canada desperately tries to bring stability to New England to no avail. And in the end, Canada may have to take sides in what is rapidly becoming a civil war. As such a war is to occur within New England, Canada has its eyes on the most radical Anglophiles, those who will ensure Canada's rules over New England is secure. Fire all your rounds. The citizens have stormed Parliament. At least they're rising up. Finally. Chile and Argentina War. We don't really care about that. Join the ISAC. Well, we're not going to last too long here. On the lines, huh? Uh, let's see. Not bad, not bad. I don't want to get that naval XP. New England's less hope. After the massacre in Boston, New England fell into anarchy. James Curley and his army seized the North as a loyalist fled south. And from the loyals rose an unexpected figure, H.P. Lovecraft, rose to the favor of all the pur pure Anglos in, Ang in New England, and rallied the Providence Society together with the loyals to wage war against the impure traitors of the North. A civil war has erupted, Providence's new crusade against the impure. This comes as a shock not only to just the people of New England, but the world, as Lovecraft's isolation and paranoia has made it almost impossible for him to achieve any sort of political power. However, something has changed in Lovecraft. Perhaps he knows that he is near death. Perhaps his overwhelming hatred of the Irish Catholics drove him. Whatever the case may be, Lovecraft and his allies in the Loyal Coalition marched for Boston. The center of the Irish scourge there, Lovecraft, and his allies within the Providence Society are expected to make an address, a prospect that terrifies the timid Lovecraft. As these small group of writers and loyals quickly assume control of the nation, Canada sends their full support to the pro new Providence government. As I see this as the only hope to secure New England under Canadian and Anglo rule, only Lovecraft can save us now. Oh, now that's a nice flag. 
Christian Resistance, and the New England Civil War. God Save the King. Uh, huh. Well, maybe we shouldn't keep going down this route, but I kind of want to do it anyways. Just because we get more stability, and it's only 12 days left. Oh, this is not too bad. Is there anything we can do here? No? No, there's nothing here, really. Things are very demilitarized, as you can see. Do we have a destroyer made? Because we are making a destroyer right now. We have no stability either. Actually, let's just make one for now, because I just want to get a lot of naval XP. Cool, at least we get more stability. 50% is not bad. Mr. Handsome Cat... Uh, Lovecraft? God save the king! The people of New England are ungrateful. They took our peaceful intervention as an invasion and tried to rebel against us. They cannot be reasoned with. They must be placed under direct Canadian rule until they are ready to act civil once more. This may not be popular with the people, but we do not need their approval. God save the king the, and God help the people of New England. Well, we'll see about that. You know what? I've heard this guy's got a very interesting cat's name. So, if you'd like to read about him, please go right ahead. Very fun cat name. Very fun. Please do not spam that in the chat. Or the chat. Or, the, you know, the comments either. Fred Trump flees. And with surprising nobody but greatly angering the syndicalists, Fred Trump has fled New York City. Knowing he was possibly only days away from arrest or worse, Trump gathered his belongings, his new wife Mary, and his mother Elizabeth Christ Trump, and fled the city. As it took place during the dark of night, and presumably with disguises, the syndicalists seemed unsure where he had gone. However, all sides strongly suspected he has fled north to New England, where he assumed that they will be accepted with open arms, despite these assumptions, though. There's a decision to be made. We should not anger the syndicalists any more than we have to, and since we have intended to remain fairly neutral, a decision one way or another could damage our relations with the various factions to the south. With that being said, we have decided we have no need for him. We'll welcome him in just to piss off the cynicalists because we don't like the cynicalists here. And besides, he might be one more body that we can use against in the Civil War. Triumph of the Providence Society. I am Providence, and Providence is myself. Together, indisubly, indisubly so, we stand through the ages. A fixed moment, a monument set eternally in the shadow of Duffy Ice Clad Peak. It is New England, I must have, in some form of an, or another. Oh, we got a lot more PP. Sending the army, war propaganda. Yeah, I could probably send in the army. Actually, do we have any? Ooh. Oh, I want to go there, but let's go to partial mobilization first. There we go. Keep building up some civvies. Oh, that's a 35-day focus. Ah, that's not too bad. It could be worse. And we're just, we just have a bunch of military divisions, which is not great. We're already lacking guns, so I can't even convert them to, like, infantry and stuff. How much support equipment do we have? None. And artillery? None. Hmm... I don't want sending in the army for more weekly stability because we could probably really use that. that would, uh, we could probably join it, but that means we can invest political power into that, and we're not really going to stay with these guys probably for too long. But whatever. Wow. And also, yeah, Texas is here too. I made sure Texas was actually here, so. That's kind of cool that Texas is just kind of hanging out. I need to play as Texas sometime. That'd be really, really cool. They do have bleeding Texas, which is not very good, but, you know, whatever. So after this one, Into the World, The Terrors from the Deep. Oh. Destroy the Curly's IRA. A new political machine? Destroy the past... The cult of the past? Let's go with Curly's IRA. Curly and his allies have plunged New England into anarchy. We cannot let these Irish monsters terrorize our proper English nation. They killed the British Empire once. They cannot be allowed to do it again. It is time to take Curly out and render New England as pure state once more. Long live Lovecraft and long live the Wasps. Wow, we lose 5,000 manpower? So be it. It is what it is. It is but a cost for the glory of New England. King Edward's Address. Um, if you want to read about this, please go right ahead. The Entente sounds ready. Well, mm, that's nice and all, but we're not really Canadian here. No matter what the crown they want you to think. Ah, yeah, well, that's fairly lucky. That's pretty normal. Cool. Securing New England would be good. Decisions to unlock would be good. Nice. Very good. 141. I do want to get more stability. Do we have anyone here that we could really use? I mean, we could go straight to partial mobilization. Stability. We'll probably get more stability later on anyways. IBM? Oh, that's not bad. Not great, but not bad. Good. Take Annex more people, please, so we can make speed up the game a little bit more. Invite, invitation to the IDAC? Well, if you're wondering about that, please go ahead. Ooh, Marlin. I like all this stuff, but let's just go to partial mobilization. Please go ahead if you want to read about this stuff. Um, I don't think we're really going to stay there, but we have no interest. We'll be added to the pool. Do we get anything out of this? I'll just go 100. Why not? We don't need political power where we're headed, right? Audit advisors. Alright, so if you like to about this, please go right ahead. At least we get some stuff here. 
Mm, 30%. I mean, that could be really good. I wonder if this is going to leave us, though, eventually. Ooh, consumer goods goes down. It's better to have more consumer goods in factories, but... Let's see. 20%. We can save a few more factories, or we can produce 30% faster. Assist with the economy. Factory output would be actually kind of beneficial, because we can release more guns. So let's go with that one. If we spend 100 political power. 30% sounds so much nicer, though. That's almost a third faster for whatever you have. Ooh. 20%. 10 factories where can 7 be used for trade. Uh, partial mobilization is not bad. Required consumer goods factories, 3. Minus 5% doesn't really get you that far, so 30% uh, from 19th. Let's go with that one. Of September, the 13th. Ah, that didn't help all that much either. Either one would have not been that great, but whatever. I guess I think we could join. That's fine for now. We want to abuse him if we possibly can. So, it is what it is. Cool. And securing New England. New England has been plunged into a civil war, one not seen before the nation's history. Somehow, even though New England was formed to escape a civil war, civil war has found its way to New England. And though, even though Curley and his Irish Republican army has been dealt with, many Republican, socialists, and Christian elements in New England still feeble, feebly oppose Providence rule. I deck investment. If you like to about that, please go right ahead. I'm just going to grab another civvy, just because that seems like the best course of action for us. Which hopefully we can use 11. I hope to go by it by one more day. Texas has joined the Reichs Pact. I've never seen Texas actually like become free and do this stuff. I actually made sure that Texas became free when it played as the feds to get to this point. Loyal to none? Cool. What is their treat like, actually? Lyndon Baines Johnson. James Allred. Uh, Mexico joined the Third International. Will Wilbert Lee O'Daniel. John S. Gardner. Obsession with national security and he's holding a gun. Nice. Nice. Good. Let's see. Strong hand. Loyal to none. Playing our cards. You can pledge loyalty to a specific group. Oh, that's kind of cool. Reclaim the borders 1848. That'd be really cool. That's actually really, really cool. Alright, so let's just go ahead and do Secure New England. Alright, so we got the destroyer done. Uh, we don't have enough naval XP yet, so I don't really want to make any other ships, really. Because there's going to be no other ship. Uh, is that not too bad? We could keep making that, but we're going to maximize the amount of naval XP we can grab right now. Go and train, and we have... What have you guys here? McCann? Sub-attack? I'll go with you then. Train indefinitely. Do you have any upgrades since we have to do some consumer goods? Minesweeper. Uh, consumer expert. Visibility. And eh, that really won't help us too much when we build a massive navy. Gandhi takes power. Hello, Gandhi. Never played as Gandhi. Maybe we should play as Gandhi someday. Road integration with Canada. As we continue to building up our economy and expanding our road network, the question arose of which direction we should drive on. Well, the custom in America has always been driving on the right side. Canada has, since the British Revolution in 1925, driven on the left. Some political leaders have suggested we switch driving on the left in an attempt to better integrate a road network into a Canadian one, whilst others, of course, wish to stay driving on the right to further amplify that New England is not a British Dominion. Why would we stay the British model? We're Americans here. We drive on the side of freedom. That's right. Absolutely. November 18th. Madras declared war on in India, or southern India. After securing New England, uh, nationalize this stuff. Project, ooh, Shadow of Innsmouth. Um, a new political machine. I like the extra political power, but it's not very much. Sort of the cold of the past. Oh, this person's industry is very good. We got all this stuff done. It's still 37. Let's go ahead and see, come over here. No, interwar armored cards would be nice. Let's grab some artillery. Uh, see it all burn. Cult of, oh, you get even more political power. It's really cold to the past. Let's, uh, stability. Let's grab this one. Establish Delta Green. Deception is a right. Truth is a privilege. Innocence is a luxury. Born of the U.S. government's 1928 raid on a degenerate coastal town in Massachusetts. The covert agency known as Delta Green opposes the forces of darkness with honor, but with glory. Without glory. Delta Green agents slip through the system, manipulating the federal bureaucracy while pushing the darkness back for another day, but often at a shattering personal cost. What cost? What needs to get done? For a start, books need to be burned. <clears throat> Artifacts smashed into powder, and men need to be silenced. Most of all, the future must never be allowed to become the present. Nice. The damage garrison goes way down. Oh, the Black Revolt is spawned. Cool. Canada support C Canada. C Can Canada. Canada supports a federal government. That's why we don't support the Canadians. Today, the Canadian government declared the support for the U.S. as a true and only legitimate claim to the mantle of American leadership in the wake of the Civil War. While stopping short of promising direct military intervention, they've offered to bolster federal forces with equipment and volunteers, as well as an array of military advisors. Advisors that have requested equipment or 
as they requested from the New England military. The Canadians stated solely that America was required to maintain, new, maintain world order and prevent the dissolution of one of the world's greatest powers into chaos. We stand ready? We need more guns. Oh, baby. But, I establish Delta Green because I want more political power. And, because it'll give us a lot more political power if we go down to Cult of Providence. Plus 2.5 and more stability is very nice to have. So we have enough guns. We are actually in a major deficit right now. Get rid of that. I'd rather just make more guns for now. Guns, 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 guns. If that's the case, don't even work on a division then. We want to get this done as fast as possible. The Vermont campaign? The Vermont is home to Ike and one as well as other disgruntled, disgusting social resistance. With currently gone, Vermont is now the epicenter of resistance to Lovecraft's rule. But with the Canadians on the board and loyal legions of Lovecraftian troops, we can engage in a mighty offensive in Vermont that will split the for rebel forces in twain. Oh, we can get a core on them. Nice. Do we not have a... What is this? A colony state? Okay. That's interesting. I didn't realize that. And that's going to take 26 days. Not bad. Supporting the federal government. Do we... Oh, actually, that might not be bad, just because you can get some experience, so... Don't really care about the feds too much, because New England's going to rule. New England rules the waves? I don't know about that, but maybe. Uh, there you go. I don't want to send my National Guard troops, because they're not that great. Volunteers are great and all, but... Oh, my goodness. Militia divisions are just not that good. The third World Series. If you like to about the World Series, please guard ahead. Um, this happens every campaign, so... Or also sure when he plays in England, but it is what it is. We currently get 0.64 political power, which is not bad. And then we'll read about Cult of Providence. To our proud people, the word of our leader is law. And to all the proud Teutonic stock of New England, Lovecraft is a leader greater than any seen before in the wake of man. All pure New Englanders saluted his gaze. Hail Providence, immortal sovereign of New England and all of America beyond. We will remember him now and for an eternity to come. The Boston Bees win. An amazing upset, the Boston Bees have somehow managed to defeat the... Of uh, uh, Red Sox in seven games after an unfortunate gap by Red Sox first baseman Jimmy Fox left out, let out the final out of the last game roll between his legs, handing the Bees their first championship since they were known as the Braves in 1914. Fox, a longtime Red Sox star, was seen crying outside Fenway Park after the game while the Bees celebrated through the evening and into the night. He was only consoled after a teammate reminded him it could be much worse. He could be down south. Maybe they're cursed. Actually, I read that one just because I don't ever remember seeing that one ever, so. And we are going to be have Vanderbilt. He bought a lot of stuff, didn't he? Um, Kennedy's here. Yeah, he's politically connected. Of course he would be. Uh, Johnson, Mark Clark. Man. No one here I really know. I'm not super, super interested in. I guess we can go down here. Get a, oh, he took Baltimore. That's kind of nice. Good job, guys. Oh, you guys are already down. Wow, you guys move fast. You guys move very fast. Keep defending, boys. Keep defending. We're well, going to need all that naval XP. Or, well, yeah, it's a good naval XP. But, um, army XP. Words. Difficult. Hard. Yes. Hello. Nice. People's Republic of that group. And what do we have for divisions? Uh, garrisons are not great. Infantry division template 2. That'd be nice, but we don't have any infantry. Like, we have no support companies and such, so... I don't really want to convert them. Militia is just not great. But they're fighting militia as well, so it's not that bad. Secure New Hampshire. Now that Vermont has fallen, time to come to drive east. The next logical place to mount an offensive will be the state of New Hampshire. The governor of the state, Style Bridges, is less than welcoming to Lovecraft's rules, actively resisted rule of the Providence Society and the Loyal Coalition. We must use our troops, loyal troops to take them out, even though Canada is less supportive of this campaign. To heck with Canada. Call to Providence? Yes, please. Establish Delta Green. End of the world, destroy the past cult. See it all burnt? I kind of want to do that. The New Gods, yes please. Rated Detection is very nice. It's almost 38. We might as well just go and grab this one. Oh yeah, I'm leaving. Uh, you already did that. Yeah, it's pretty laggy. Oh baby. Oh, there goes FKMT. Ah, National Populism. Oh, slowly we're getting down. So we probably want to maximize that as fast as possible. Probably Dunwich Horror. Tear from the Deep would be really cool. Uh, new Political Machine. What? Zero five is okay, but Jack the Doberman. As a man falls back into his usual routine of killing his neighbors, the animal world is not spared from the violence either. A happy story, however, emerged from Connecticut, where a young Doberman, ironically named Jack, was able to stop militia agents from blowing up a bomb in Hartford. The dog was training in cooperation with the Connecticut National Guard when his patrol spotted the agents who promptly tried to escape from capture. With the courage of a true American, the, dog, the little dog immediately ran after them and pulled one of the two men down, leading to his capture. The man later turned out to be none other than Paul Rashford, a target long sought after by the Hartford Police Department for his implication 
and the riots only a few months earlier, and who seems to have established a whole network of operatives in Connecticut. Well, as a capture by no means marks the end of social threat in the state, Jack has dealt a heavy blow to the leadership. Great. Order restored in New England. Uh, if you'd like to read about that, please go right ahead. Cool. And X Brigade. Exists within a world of forces beyond our understanding or reasoning. While some might dismiss them, we can accept them and find out more. A former FBI agent by the name of Muddler, who now serves in Delta Green, has approached Lovecraft to discuss the subject of otherworldly beings contacted, contacting New England. With him are so-called X-Files, which apparently prove that the old federal government was hiding the existence of extraterrestrial extraterrestrial life. These revelations, if shown to the public, can shake the world to its core. So keeping the existence of any extraterrestrial life under the wrappings is something of utmost importance. After talking with Lovecraft, Mulder has suggested the creation of an ex-brigade to deal with the existence of an alien life form. Forming it would be a serious drain of public support, spent on something that may not even be real. However, Lovecraft's belief in the beyond may sway him to fund the ambitious new project. Explain saying authorized creation of the ex-brigade? Why not? Let's go right on ahead. Um, I think we'll just keep going, pushing for as much national popular support and do the new gods as fast as possible, so. Destroy the code of the past. The new orders have taken hold, yet a few hold out patriots and nostalgic for the days of the Republic remain. As for these Republicans, how can one regard seriously a fright and greedy nostalgic huddle of tradesmen and lucky idlers who shut their eyes to history and science, stealing their emotions against decent human sympathy, cling to sordid uh, and provincial ideals exalting sheer acquisitiveness and condoning artificial hardship for the non-materially shrewd dwell smugly and are sentimentally in a distorted dream cosmos of outdated phases phrases and principles and attitudes based on the bygone agricultural handicraft world and revel in consciously or unconsciously mendaciously assumptions mendacious assumptions which as a, such as a notion that the real liberty is synonymous with a single detail of unrestricted economic license or that a rational planning of resource distribution re uh, re resource distribution would be contra contravene some vague and mystical American heritage, utterly contrary to the fact and without the slightest foundation in human existence. Intellectually, the Republican idea deserves the tolerance and respect one gives to the dead. That is some... Wow, that must be his own writing. Holy crap. That is a lot of words. It's like word salad, man. He does speak a lot of words, man. A lot of words. Yeah, let's get some armor, too. Are we still fighting? Yes, we are. Very nice. And also, our main guys are led by uh, John Pershing, which is actually really cool. Inner War Tiller is very nice. Uh, let's, uh, it's 38. let's grab that. Good. Now let's grab some of this, too. More defensive breakthrough. Thank you. Securing Maine. Now that the rebel forces have been split, the chips far to fall away. The final pocket of resistance in the east is a state of Maine. Governor Lewis O. Barrows has declared Maine as separate for the rest of New England and has rallied the state's National Guard to his side along with several defectors and syndicalist militias. They must be taken out and the job won't be too hard considering the fact that they aren't cut off from the rest of the nation and Canada's pledged their full support. Good. Take them out. Take all those Mainers out. That's a bad damage garrison goes way down. Division of temp vets on core territory. Wait, do we see this as core territory? I guess not. Huh. There goes the Islamic Federation of Turkestan. Goodbye, Islamic Federation of Turkestan. And we can only get 0.67 political power every day. United people. That's kind of cool. I need to play the Black Revolt sometime. That seemed like a cool faction to maybe try out sometime. Of course, we did weaken American Union State with Texas, but exploration into the paranormal. Lovecraft has always had a powerful belief in spiritualism, and with his iron grip on the government, he has authorized the creation of a special branch within Delta Green, especially dedicated to the paranormal and spiritual. With this new branch, we will delve into the vast depths of the unknown, the vast unknown of the afterlife will finally be explored, and the secrets of life and death will be finally revealed. While some in Lovecraft's government may not be happy with this waste of tax money, their opinions do not matter to Lovecraft. His word is law, no one dares says otherwise. What secrets does the afterlife hold? Probably a lot of good ones. A serious gun. Goodbye, Al Serium. Actually, I was liking so hard it almost crashed the game as well as we were reading that one focus. So, looking pretty good. The world's looking pretty good. I like it. I like it a lot. And we'll read next to see it all burn. If religion were true, followers would not try to bludgeon their young into an artificial conformity, but would merely insist on their unbending quest for truth, irrespective of artificial backgrounds or practical consequences. Many falsely equate our movement to revive the Anglo spirit of America to be the religious fundamentalists or occult mystics that have taken root in the darkest corners of our nation. Their beliefs are will ultimately betray our movement, and we must work diligently to utterly shatter any semblance of religious authority within our ranks and prevent those these misguided simpletons from gaining too much power within our ranks. More national populism? None. The shadow of her uh, insmouth. But first, secure upstate New York. The final rebel holdout is the remains of the state of New York. The upper part of the state was practically abandoned since Mayor 
Fiorello, La Guardia, declared that New York City was no longer part of New York State. Ever since then, the state has been racked with lawlessness until Canada came in restored order. Now, they are the last pocket of resistance with Governor Herbert Lehman and the tattered remnants of the rebel forces. They are close to collapse, and once we begin our mighty offensive to Albany, the last holdouts will surely trouble. When Providence originally began the process of rewriting this novella's shadow over Innsmouth into a more substantial tome, it was merely to satisfy the demand of his followers to expand on its themes and motifs, to better immerse, immerse the reader in Lovecraft's world-building and philosophy following his breakout success. With his ride to prominence of political dominance, however, the shadow over Innsmouth has undergone a beautiful Innsmouth itself, or beautiful and terrifying transformation, not unlike that of the deep ones of the titular Innsmouth itself, consisting of two parts. The first of the book is written from the perspective of the narrator and essentially consists of various curated poems, letters, and speeches previously written by Providence. Several passages are addressed directly to the reader on the nature of New England, heritage, and narrator's personal philosophy, who is clearly a standard for Providence himself. It is generally understood that this first section exists purely to equip the reader with essential knowledge and build their mental fortitude before the second half. The story then rapidly unravels into an epic tale and deep, deep dive into the very heart of Lovecraft mythos. It's an autobiography, a fabricated story, a description of godhood, equal parts truth and a lie, a how-to guide for apothesis, a profane poem, a holy description, an apology for Lovecraft's actions, a profane gesture to those he questioned, who questioned his or New England's legitimacy, an explanation of how meek and impatient man could rise to such greatness, it is at once a terrifying look into the mind of Providence, a guide on how to become like him, an intensely disturbing and immersive story that would take a lifetime to fully process. While weaker minds have been driven to madness by Providence Magnum Opus, those capable of finishing his work without losing themselves emerge fundamentally change. This text will require or will shake the world to its core. Very nice. We'll good grab some war propaganda. I don't mind this, but it doesn't help us build factories, so we might just wait. And we're already on partial mobilization, so stability might be really good. Secure all of New England? No, I'll do this one. New England is secure from the Imperial. Providence and his gallant allies within the Providence of society and the loyal coalition have destroyed the anarchists, the soldiers, and the Imperial. This day is to celebrate. New England is whole again. The Civil War is over, my friends. And I guess we didn't spend political power, but that's okay. New England Civil War, we lose that, and we get 0 0.05 more political power, and get 5% more stability. Very nice. And we're still not even doing anything here, we're just kind of holding out and having a good time. Uh, Willard G. Wyman, pretty good. Pretty darn good. Just don't lose too many men, please, please, please. We got plenty of guns, let's go make some more divisions then. And we're gonna make uh, garrisons. Uh, we'll make garrisons. Just because they don't require Infantry and what we actually have, so. That'd be good. Actually, just convert to infantry is fine for now. Garrisons are actually not too bad. Uh, they really should be called garrisons. These guys should be called garrisons. They are literally garrisons, so. Rename that. Cool. And. Small inf. No subs. No subs, my friends. No subs. See it all burn, my friends. See it all burn. Hopefully, it's more propaganda, too. Now we get 1.11 political power. Pretty good, I'd say. Pretty darn good. The New Gods. Lovecraft's New Order, I would love to get. Enter the world when you create, uh, do Tear from the Deep. Embrace the Darkness. Sort of seal, seal it all off. The Black Spot of the Americas. Command Economy. Show them our light. Let me know in the comments below. Which one should we do? I kind of want to do Lovecraft's America. Should we do Show Them Our Light and beat the crap out of all the other factions in America? Or should we do Embrace the Darkness and have a really good time that America's dead? Let me know in the comments below. But, the new gods. In search of truth, the hopeful zealot goes, but all the sadder turns the more he knows. The current religious and mystical order in Americas reveals not life lessons and guidance, but miserable platitudes that ultimately leaves the soul unsatisfied. The Judeo-Christian God, as we know it, offers us no answers. Providence, anointed by the one true God, has seen the dark universe yawning, where the black planets roll without aim, where they roll in the horror unheeded, without knowledge, luster, or name. By studying his mythos and anthropomorphizing his characters into a form of occult study, we can perhaps clean a small sliver of of endless, his endless, dark wisdom. The old gods are dead. Long live the new gods. Long live the, American, the ancient ones and all those who succeed them. Remove Christian resistance? Nice. That's actually really good. That really hurts us. So 38, grab some improved infantry equipment one. And improve on our light tanks that we can't make any of them. Which sucks, but whatever. Hey, family 15. Nice. That's actually pretty good. Uh, keep defending, keep defending. And uh, actually, I'm going to just convert to your garrisons immediately. There you go. Oh, no, let's go. Okay. Well, there goes Ukraine. Now that's going to be much better. I mean, not much better, but just overall, just better overall. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Oh, let's come back over here. Oh, they took over that. That's not good. Um, 
Oh, Delay Doctrine is very, very good. And we shall do this one. Mobile Defense. Very cool. So, do we finish this up? I think we did. We need, We really do need radar on these guys, but that's actually not too bad. If that's the case, go ahead and start making this one, then. I don't mind making that one, because that's not too bad. Uh, these cruisers, I don't like these things. Get some rapid-fire guns, escort batteries. That's good. This will be uh, good enough. That's pretty weird. It didn't... Let me save that. Okay, it doesn't want to save for some reason sometimes. Am I cooking too fast? I might be. I'm not really sure. Uh, if you want secondary batteries, that's fine. Just get the better ones. We have two. And do we have level one of the stuff? Oh, we only have level one, which is not good, but whatever. Actually, having two of these is not really worth it. Because you want anti-sub stuff. Ooh. Actually, you want to convert this to here. And convert this one to that one. But at this point, it doesn't really matter too much. Overall, this is not too bad. You might as well start making these in. See it all burn. Cool, but unfortunately we must end the episode here and we'll finish with new gods and we'll do this one off screen. But I'll go ahead and read the next. Focus. Absorb the cults. Oh, look at this. A warrior society. Oh, we go to limited conscription. Warrior society. In order to defend the movement from the world beyond our serene grace, it is our utmost duty to send guard ever vigilant side by side with the Canadian allies. Every citizen of military age must make it their sworn duty to prepare themselves for the final struggle against the darkness and barbarities of cynicalism and the fallen threats alike. Buried now are the hatreds of king, a subject and king, and the strife that once sundered an empire hath vanished. With the fame of the Saxon, the heaven shall ring, as the vultures of darkness are baffled and banished, and the broad... British sea, of her enemies free, shall in tribute bow gladly Columbia to thee, for the friend of the right, and the field side by side, form a fabric of freedom, no hand can, di can divide. But if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, as we continue on with Lovecraft's New England with his cat, and see what we can do as we defend against tyranny. Thanks for watching, have a great rest of your day.